And now, afternoon theatre. John Pullen plays Martin Chapman, with Jane Wenham as his wife Jill, in The Darkened Schoolroom by T.D. Webster. I suppose they are open. It's only a lake. No towel on the pumps. Stand at the bar and rattle some change or something. <clears throat> nice fire. Sorry, didn't hear you come in. Uh, Mr. Kingsley? Well, that's right. But I don't often get the mister. The name's Bob. Well, I'm Martin Chapman, the new supply head at the school. Ah, our new school boss. Pleased to meet you. Uh, you'll be stopping until the school closes at Easter. I understand, sir. Hmm. What is it? About six weeks. You'll hardly have time to turn around before it's time to go. <laughs> well, that's one of the hazards of being on supply. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is Jill, my wife. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Chapman. Hello. Jill will be teaching part-time in Mrs. Uh, Owen's place. Oh, good. We were beginning to think they'd forgotten about us at the education office. <laughs> it took us ages to find Oxby. Mm, we are a bit off the map. Uh, you're not local? No. We moved up here from London at the beginning of last term. Ah. I filled it at a school in Spalding up to Christmas. Since then, I've been all over the county. Oh, you'll find things a bit different here. <laughs> I'm sure I shall. And by the way, where is the school exactly? Oh, it's halfway between here and Fenham. Well, when they built the school in 1817, neither village could agree where they should put it. So they <laughs> stuck it between the two villages, all by itself. And it caters for children of both Oxby and Fenham. Uh, yes, what children there are. We were hoping we might be able to have a look round. Mm -hmm. I understand your wife has the keys. Uh, that's right. Molly's a caretaker. Uh, Molly? Yes? Here a sec. This is Mr. and Mrs. Chapman, the new teachers. Oh, Pleased to meet you. you Hello, doing? Mrs. Kingsley. Yeah, I'm letting you stand here without a drink. Uh, what are you having? Or is it too early? Oh, it's never too early. <laughs> ah, that's what I like to hear. Spot of whiskey? Oh, thank you. Uh, you'll need something warm if you're going up there. It'll be bitter cold. Uh, anything in it? Oh, no, that's fine, thanks. Mm, I'll have a drop of water, please. Oh, well, there you are. Help yourself. I'll get the keys. I light the stove all day Monday, ready for the Tuesday start. It soon warms the school through. Mm, I rather fancy standing with my back to a nice warm stove. <laughs> <laughs> we understand there's a schoolhouse. Yes. Is it occupied? Oh, well, it's, it's over ten years since anybody lived there. Mrs. Hobson and Miss Owens used the living room as a staff room. It was decorated when they last did the school. What about the rest of the house? Oh, it's years since I looked upstairs. There's no damp. It was always a dry house. <laughs> More keys than the chief warder. <laughs> we can let ourselves in if you're busy here. Oh, I'll come up with you. Shall we need the car? Oh, yes. It's well out of the village. The children either bike or they're taken by car. Mm. Oh. Would you like another drink? Oh, not just now, thanks. Uh, perhaps when we get back. Shan't be long, Molly. All right. Cheerio. This is the cloakroom. The sinks are fairly new, and there's hot water. Uh, this used to be two classrooms, but Mrs. Hobson had the partition taken down when there weren't enough children for two classes. It's nice and bright. Plenty of space. Mm -hmm. When my children came here, there were over 30 in each of the two classes, and that were only 12 years ago. Did you come to the school here, Mr. Kingston? Oh, no, I'm not a local. Though I've been here since I was stationed nearby in the war, in the RAF. I met Molly, got married and stayed. I can never work out how I come to be a school manager. Though if you live here long enough, you finish up on everything. Church council, British Legion, old folks out in committee, the lot. <laughs> how many children are there on roll now? Oh, it was, uh, 16, just before they broke up for half term. But another family's moved, 14 now. Well, I suppose that's why the school's closing. No young families moving into either village, you see. Very little council housing, and nobody wants a tight cottage these days. Now, you'll be the last school boss here, Mr. Chapman. It's sad. Progress and economic necessity, they said. Ah, yeah, still all over and done with now. There seems to be plenty of stock. I had a horror of turning up on Tuesday and finding no pencils and paper. Oh, 
I think you will find everything in very good shape. Mrs. Hobson knew what she was about. Very well thought of. We were all glad when she got the headship at Fanny. The new school? That's right. Only just finished. That's why the education committee let her leave at half term. So she can get things straight for the opening at Easter. Mrs. Owens is retired, of course. I mean, she was due to go at Christmas. But she hung on till Mrs. Hobson left. Everything seems very neat and tidy. Fourteen children. It's going to seem very strange. Well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and there's a scullery through here where Molly dishes up the dinners. What's out here? Oh, that's the back door. The toilets are across the playground there. And there's a bit of grass for them to run around on. Splendid isolation. It's a marvellous view. Uh, this is the only bit of high land for miles. The fen's over that way and uh, Lincoln to the north. What's that building through the trees over there? Uh, old Fenham Hall. What's left of it? It's not been lived in for 20 years. It used to belong to the Cross family. Who are they? Local squires? Well, they owned everything and everybody, I understand. Long before my time here. Molly can tell you all about the Crosses. Both her mother and her elder sister were in service at the hall at one time, and her father got to be head groom. And that's the schoolhouse? Yes, yes, they liked the school bars on the premises in the old days. We were wondering if there might be a possibility of renting it. We're buying a new house in Granford. It was supposed to be ready for Christmas, but now they tell us it won't be finished until Easter at the earliest. If we moved into the schoolhouse, we could bring our furniture up here and it would be all ready to move to Granford at Easter. It would save us a tremendous amount of bother. Well, I uh, can't see any objections. The education office would have to give their permission. Oh, we've already sounded them out. They said it depended on the school managers. Well, there aren't many of us left. The cannon's in hospital, Jack Palmer has moved. That only leaves Miss Box at the shop, Tom Stott and me. Would they agree, do you think? I don't see why not. But before we say any more, we'd better have a look round and see what sort of state it's in. Uh, we'll go back through the schoolroom. The inside door leads into the house kitchen. Very handy being able to step straight from home right into your job. Hello. Uh, Mr. Chapman. That's right. Andrew Smith. I'm, I'm the curate at St. Peter's. Oh, yes, pleased to meet you. Bob Kingsley said you'd be looking in. Oh, I <laughs> did intend to calling you on your first day, but I've been rather rushed filling in for Callan Butler. Oh, yeah. Well, you look as if you settled in very well. Yes. Feel as if I've been here years. <laughs> oh, I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, no, nothing vital. I'm just catching up on admin. Only 14 kids on roll, but still, usual red tape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it can wait. Come and meet Joe. Hmm. More tea, Mr... <laughs> Oh, dear, do I call you Reverend or Mr. or what? I prefer Andrew. In the village, I'm often addressed as curate. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me wince. Uh, yeah, I will have another cup, thank you. Mm. Do help yourself to cake. Oh, thanks. Mm. Well, I must say you've made this room very cosy. A bit of instant decorating. It was chaos last week. We did here, the bedroom and the kitchen all at one go. Oh, it's good to see the place lived in. I often drive this way at night. Used to look so forlorn. We like it, being all alone. Makes a change. Good. So you've uh, settled to country life? Oh, very much so. Mm. And the children are lovely. Where do you live? I've got a couple of rooms at the rectory at Halesby. That's the big village beyond Fenham. Isn't that where the children from here are going after the closure? Mm, yes, the, the extensions of the school are almost finished. You must be rather busy doing the canon's work and your own. There is another curate, Frank Hill. We're a group parish, six churches. We look after three each. Sort of a flying past. <laughs> yes, that's it, exactly. <laughs> we shoot round on Sundays from church to church. What kind of congregations do you get? Oh, sparse. Hillsby's the largest, usually round about 20. The others vary between 10 and 6. Nearly all old people do. We found everybody very helpful. And uh, forthcoming? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly expect to be accepted as a real school boss. Did you know that you're only the... Yes, the eighth head teacher since 1869. Cool. Well, incidentally, I was turning out a cupboard the other day. Oh, yes. And I found an old log book. It's hmm? here. Now, I think this fits marvellous. Listen. I, 
Evil in Bridges commenced duty this day as headmistress of Oxby Parochial Church School. 63 children answered to the register. I shall be assisted by Maud J. Thompson, student teacher. It's dated August the 30th, 1902. Oh, may I see? Is this the only one you found? Yes, apart from the current one. Mm. Last entry, January 1904. Mm. Well, the ones preceding and following this will be in the county archives of Lincoln. I must look them up sometime. I've only glanced at this, but it makes fascinating reading. It's beautiful handwriting. I bet Miss Evelyn Bridges knew what she was about. Well, I'm not turning this over to county archives just yet. I want to read it through. Mm. Well, I should like to, to borrow it when you've finished. something. Oh, what? Oh, oh, music. Singing. Did you leave the radio on? Did I? What? I heard singing. The radio. Did you leave it on? Oh, oh you didn't have the radio on last night. Oh, you, you were dreaming. Oh, lie down. You're letting in the cold. It was a dream. Turn off the light. Did you say singing? Well, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> well, he was dreaming. Well, it could have been the wind through the telegraph wires. It's often windy up there. It sounded like early one morning. Well, it was early, I'll give you that. Two o'clock. Oh, you know. La, la, da, de, da, oh, da, la, de, I know de, the tune, oh, One or two of the lads get up there poaching. Singing poachers? <laughs> oh, what do you think, Molly? Are there any musical poachers in the village? Look, it's getting on for nine, Molly. You said you'd call and see Mrs. Bancroft. What's this about music? Martin thinks he heard singing in the night. Singing? The children singing early one morning. From the schoolroom? But it came from downstairs, yes. I think it's the strain, the pressures of command, all those children. Yes. Excuse me, I shall have to be going. Oh dear. Well, it's quiet tonight. Oh, well, this is about usual. We get a lot of car trade at the weekends, but not much midweek. Same old faces, then. <laughs> you said you were going to show me how to play darts. All right. Nice I'll come round that side. Really? I'll partner you and Martin can play with Eric. Really? All right, Eric? Nice job there. What? Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. right. Now, if anybody wants a drink and get their oh. own. Oh, oh, well, that's that's right. Right. Then, Somebody <laughs> moved them up there. doing? Didn't you hear it? Hear what? The singing. No, I didn't. Oh, it's freezing down here. Close the door. It was the same song. It stopped when I opened the schoolroom door. Then just for a few seconds I heard what sounded like a woman sobbing. Martin. I heard it, Jill. It wasn't imagination. Oh, it's cold. Let's go back upstairs. I heard something. Yes, all right, but let's go back to bed. You don't believe me? Love, I'm barely awake. From the moment we came here, I felt... 
I don't know, a sense of something, a kind of quiet sadness. Haven't you felt it? No. It's something to do with Miss Bridges. How do you know that? Well, I, I don't know it. I feel it. You've spent too long studying that logbook. Well, it'll sound ridiculous if you tell anybody. Do you think it sounds ridiculous? I didn't say that. Let's go back upstairs. Shall I make a hot drink? No, thanks. Turn the light off. Three, four, six, Martin Chapman. Uh, Andrew Smith here. Oh, just the man. I was going to ring you. You can read the lesson on Sunday. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I suppose so. But it isn't that. Um, will you be calling around this evening? I can, yes. Um, we're thinking of organising an Edwardian evening at the school. You know, kind of concert. Oh. Um, Miss Bridges always used to list the songs she was going to teach the children in the logbook, and we could do some of those. Um, but we'll need your help with uh, any local performers. Yes, of course. It sounds a wonderful idea. Uh -huh. oh, by the way, I traced the logbook following the one you've got. You've seen it? Mm, this afternoon at the archives at Lincoln. I only managed to have a quick glance through it. I didn't have long. Uh, when does it go up to? Oh, uh, 1910, I think. It wasn't all Miss Bridges. Entries by her stopped in October 1904. Did it say what happened to her? No, not a word. A chap called Simpson took over and remained head until he retired in the early 1930s. Yeah. Oh, something else. I found an old chap at Azelton who was actually taught by Miss B. No. How old is he? <laughs> Getting on for 80. I can arrange for you to meet him if you like. Yes, I should like to. I'll fix it. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Green. Come in. Oh, thank you. I've, I've brought the visitor I told you about. Huh? This is Martin Chapman, the new headmaster at Oxby. Pleased to meet you, sir. How do you do? Come through. Sit down. Thank you. <laughs> How do you live in a lovely spot, Mr. Green? Hmm? You're a countryman, sir? Uh, no, but I'm learning to be. Ah, that's the idea. <laughs> School boss at Oxby, eh? Yes, until it closes at Easter. Uh, it isn't right closing it. No. The village... Uh, should have its own school and not send its children away. There must have been a good many more children in the school when you were there, Mr. Green. Mm -hmm. Packed full. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used to come as far as Fendicroft. I understand you were at the school when Miss Bridges was there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Do you remember much about her? Uh, bits and pieces, you know. Uh, it's a long time and I've seen and done a lot since then. You know, I've not stuck in this place. All my life, you know, I've seen the world. Enlisted in 1914 and stayed in the army till they kicked me out in 45. Mm. But you remember Miss Bridges? Oh, some things as clear as anything. How old was she? Oh, you're asking me something now. I mean, she seemed old to us, like teachers always do to children. <laughs> I suppose she'd be, what, 35, 36? She always dressed very smart. Uh, a long dark skirt and, and a blouse with a high collar. She was a neat woman. Yeah. Very nice looking. Strict, mind you. One or two rough old boys at the school in those days, she settled them very sharp. When she said jump, you jumped. <laughs> <laughs> She'd have a sitting like this. Arms folded at the back. Oh, yeah. No backs to the benches to lean on, you know. You had to keep a straight back. Mind you, it did me no harm. Did she like music? That's what I remember most. The music. We had this little choir. Used to sing all over. We sang for Mr. Cross at the old times without number. Uh, Mr. Cross was the squire? That's right, right. He lived at Fenimore. <laughs> ah, she was a... Uh, Good woman. Do you know, in winter, when the weather was bad, she made soup in the morning before school. And it was there, waiting for us. There was plenty of them went to school, you know, with empty bellies. Mm. And she knew it. She did it herself, a haul out in her own pocket. You wouldn't say that now. Oh, she was a, a good woman. Were you there when she left? Left? Didn't she leave the school in uh, 1904? She didn't leave. She died. 
She's in Oxby Churchyard, near the big yew tree. I didn't know that. How did she die? Have you ever stood in the schoolyard and looked over Aylesby Way? Yes. There was a railway line there between Lincoln and King's Lynn. That's where Miss Bridges was killed. An accident. What happened? Well, as I recall, and uh, remember he was only a little old boy at the time, she was crossing the line. She got hit by the train. I can't recall much else about it, except, well, there was a big fuss in the village, and uh, I think it was potato-picking week. Charlie Briggs could tell you more about it. He's four years older than me. Uh, Mr. Briggs died last year, Mr. Green. So he did. I forgot. <laughs> there won't be many left, you remember. It's gone back a bit. Yes, I, I think you're the only person around who was at the school at the time, Mr. Green. The last of the old brigade, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah. Knocked down by a train. That's all I remember. Almost a long time ago. She was a nice woman. Well, you've been very helpful, Mr. Green. Yeah. Have you seen the world, sir? Africa? Egypt? India? France? But I've seen nothing better than the view from the old schoolyard over Aylesby Way. That was a bit of a turn-up. Hmm. I'm astonished no one's ever told me. Just the kind of story that asks to become part of village folklore. But there aren't many genuine locals left, are there? Mm, that's true. You remember I told you about the singing I thought I heard? Uh, yes. I heard it again the other night. Did Jill? No. But I was wide awake this time. I went down to the schoolroom and when I opened the door it stopped. Then for a few seconds I heard a woman sobbing. You've never heard any stories about the school being haunted? No, but I haven't been here that long. You know, when I'm alone in the schoolroom at night after the kids have gone, I often get the feeling that I'm being watched. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Uh, what about Jill? Is she bothered by all this? No, she thinks I'm going round the bend. What do you think? Oh. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. No, I think there are too many well-documented stories of happenings for them to be dismissed lightly. Baldy Rectory, for example. From what I can gather, no one ever seemed very keen to live in the schoolhouse. Molly was most uneasy when we asked about renting it when we first came. Have you told her about the scene? When I mentioned it to Bob in the pub, she scuttled off. That was the first time. I haven't told anybody else about the other night. And you think what you heard has something to do with Miss Bridges. I think I heard her sobbing the other night. My hair stood on end, but I felt more disturbed and moved than terrified. And curious. Evelyn Bridges, 1869 to 1904. Hmm. Not much, is it? I thought there'd be a fancy inscription. Mm. <laughs> Look at some of the others. I wonder who had it erected. A uh, family, I suppose. But who looks after it? The Virgin, perhaps? Well, I'm surprised Andrew didn't know it was here. Oh, I don't know. There are hundreds of graves. Oh, there he is. In his working top, sort of change. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> On duty. Mm, I've got a wedding here in 20 minutes. Ah, I see you've found Miss Bridges. Mm. I expected to find it overgrown. Who keeps it like this? The verger says a middle-aged couple come up from Cambridge once a month to attend to it. Apparently they're distant relatives of Miss Bridges. Are they? Mm. Their name's in the visitor's book in the church, and their address, I think. Yeah, I'd like to talk to them. But if they're only middle-aged, they must have been born years after Miss B died. Well, they're bound to know something about it. Oh, let me know if you find anything, will you? Oh, I must rush. By the way, I don't suppose you'd fancy coming along to augment the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, thank you. <laughs> it's only my second wedding. I don't want to have to do all the singing as well. <laughs> it really is very good of you to let us intrude like this, Mr. Watson. Not at all. We're always glad to see visitors. Things tend to be rather quiet now that the children have gone. 
How many children have you? A son and daughter. Both flown the nest now. Mark is teaching in London and Evelyn is at Reading University. Evelyn? After Miss Bridges? I suppose so, yes. <laughs> I think you said something about an old school logbook over the phone. Yes. We found it at the back of a cupboard. It covers the time when Miss Bridges started at Oxby. Oh, we should have brought it. Yes, you must call and see it next time you come to Oxby. Yes, I should like to. Exactly what relation are you to Miss Bridges, Mr. Watson? Hmm. Now, uh, let me get it right. She was my maternal grandmother's sister. Oh, your mother's aunt. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I can remember going with my father and mother to Oxby to look after the grave, a kind of family ritual. My daughter refers to it as our monthly grave raid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've become very fond of Oxby. I'm sure if my wife can find the old papers I mentioned, you'll get a much fuller picture. I'm sorry I've been so long. Ah, there you I was are. beginning to think we'd lost them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when Mark was at college, he lent them to somebody who was doing a thesis on village school. Let me clear the table so we can see what there is. I'll um, move the tray. She must have been tremendously conscientious. Look at these lesson notes, right down to the last detail. Mm, Timetables. Oh, lecture notebook from college. She was a great believer in getting everything on paper. We've always been very impressed by the neatness. Mm. Nothing to beat the old copper plate hand. Oh, yes, it's beautiful. There are lesson notes here that cover the time she was at Oxford. Huh? What's this? Oh, she took the children to see the old stocks outside the church. <laughs> I did that last week. <laughs> <laughs> so much for modern methods. <laughs> it looks as if a page has fallen out. Oh, that. No, it isn't a page. It's a note. And it's baffled us for years. May I look? Of course. Yes. Greatly regret. Not possible tonight. Tuesday. There's no address, and unsigned. Mm. Well, it clearly isn't her handwriting. It's good quality paper. A subject of great family speculation. Mm. <laughs> a romance, do you think? Well, it could be. Now, why isn't it signed? That's the bit that always fascinates us. There's something familiar about it. The handwriting, you mean? Yes, it must be. Perhaps you'll remember later. I'll make a photostat of this at the bank on Monday and send it on to you. Oh, thank you. Miss Bridges seems to have been surrounded by mystery and speculation. In what way? You know how she died. Only that she was knocked down by a train not far from the school. Do you know any more? Well, it appears that every Wednesday evening after tea, she used to visit a Miss Roberts, who lived in a cottage on the edge of the Fenham estate. She was the ex-governess of the Cross children. And on that particular evening, it was very foggy. She must have tripped and fallen just as a train was coming. Perhaps she stunned herself. Crossing the line to go and see Miss Roberts was part of an established routine. Every Wednesday at about six o'clock. Mm. What about the train? Didn't that come through at the same time every Wednesday? Yes, but it was due sometime before six. It was late because of the fog, so ah, she didn't expect it. I see. Why was she buried in Oxby Church? Ah, another family mystery. The bridges hail from a village just outside Ely. There are dozens of them buried there. But Evelyn wasn't. We've never been able to understand it. We thought the people from the two villages might have asked that she be buried at Oxby. Oh, although if they did, they didn't make much of a splash on the gravestone. <laughs> That's true. No cherubs or angels. But it's a lovely spot in the churchyard, just there by the yew tree. Yes, it is. Sounds as if you learned quite a bit about Miss B. We filled in a few gaps. And Mr. Watson sent us a copy of the mysterious note. Hmm? Here. It's rather faint, but I, I think oh. you can read it. Oh, thank you. Aunt? Did you tell the Watsons about early one morning? No, I didn't mention that. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I think there's a direct correlation between the amount of drink consumed and the ghostly singing. There's nothing like wifely sympathy and understanding, is there, Andrew? Uh, how's the Edwardian evening coming along? <laughs> It'll be all right on the night, I suppose. Oh, it's going to be marvellous. The kids will all be dressed in period, and I'm playing the piano a la Miss Bridges in a long skirt and high blouse. Uh, oh, somebody's lending Martin an Edwardian-type Norfolk jacket. <laughs> I saw Arthur Talbot from Halesby the other day. Oh, he's very keyed up. Yeah, he's singing trumpeter, what are you sounding now? With real trumpet played by Brother Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet Mrs. Ada Rogers is singing Love's Guardian of Roses with Parted as an encore. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a swinging night. <laughs>
I thought it went really well. I do, really. <laughs> I don't know how we got everybody in. <laughs> well, they'll be asking for a repeat performance in every village from here to Spalding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, I'm afraid there won't be time before we break up next week. Oh, is your house ready, then? Well, not quite, but they're sure it will be finished for Easter. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, you'll soon be busy packing. I haven't seen five minutes since you came. I shall be sorry to go in many ways. Yes. Well, you'll be able to say you've known a real village school. There won't be any left soon. Seems a pity. I hope the children will settle at Halesby. I think they will. The boys are looking forward to having enough to play football. <laughs> Mr Chapman, I had to come over and tell you how much I enjoyed the show. Thank you. I'm Sarah Bingham's grandfather. Oh, Sarah. Well, she told me you were coming. <laughs> I thought it went a treat. And didn't they sing their hearts out? <laughs> My missus had tears rolling down her face. Ah. Now, what are you drinking, man? Uh, Mrs. Chapman? Well, that's very kind of you, but I think it's gone closing time. <laughs> we don't bother ourselves unduly about closing time, do we, Bob? And it's a special night. Now, come on, what are you having? Phew! I thought we were never going to get away. <laughs> the penalty of fame. <laughs> My public. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they were nice, weren't they? <laughs> what time is it? <gasps> Half past twelve. Mm -hmm. I bet they're still drinking down there. Want anything to eat? I'm going to make some coffee. Oh, no, nothing for me, thanks. Ooh. Oh, it's cold. I thought it seemed mild outside. I'll put the fire on. It's bitter. My God. You can hear it? Martin, let's get out. It's all right. Just keep still and listen. It came from the schoolroom. Don't go, Martin, please. Just keep still and wait there. It's all right. Christ! Well, what is it? What can you see? No. Don't look. What is it? Martin, what is it? Don't go in. But I can't see anything. There's nothing. Martin, what did you see? She was hanging from that rafter by a rope. Long dress, hair almost to her waist. I couldn't see her face. What was the crash? She stood on a chair, then kicked it away. Miss Bridges? Yes. Let's go back into the kitchen. It isn't as cold. No. I once read some, somewhere about the temperature going down just before something like this happened. It, it was cold when you said you heard it before. Yes, it was. But you heard it this time. Yes, I did. I need a whiskey. Want some? Uh, please. Martin, what you saw, it, it, it could have been the moonlight through the trees. I saw it. She hanged herself. It was as real as the singing. Oh, why? I think in some way we've stirred something up. Something that's always been here. We found the logbook, we've talked about Miss Bridges, we've read what she wrote. In some way we've generated, I don't know, a feeling that's manifested itself. You think Miss Bridges committed suicide? I saw her. Well, her body was found on the railway line. That doesn't mean she died there. Someone must have moved the body. But why? Where's the logbook? Well, it's, it's here. Why, what's wrong? Where is it? Uh, look at that. School visited 17th June 1904. Everything found to be satisfactory. Signed, Howard Cross, Chairman of the Managers. Look at the handwriting. It's exactly the same as the note the Watson sent us. I knew I'd seen the writing before. The school managers visited the school regularly. And when they did, they made some sort of entry in the logbook. Howard Cross? He lived at Fenham Hall. So Miss Bridges was having an affair with him. Yes. Something drastic must have gone wrong. It would have been very easy for him to visit her here at night. She may have got pregnant, or, or he packed her in. The scandal would have been enormous if they'd been found out. Oh, poor Miss Bridges. 
She must have been absolutely desperate. What she felt was intense enough to recreate what happened here tonight. Molly will know all about the Cross family. I've always had the feeling that she knows more than she lets on. Are you going to tell Andrew? No. He can't help, can he? Help? He can't tell me why she did it or what happened. And you have to know. Yes, I do. Not much point in polishing the desks, Molly. Nobody's going to sit at them anymore. Oh, force a habit. I thought they might send these to Halesby, but I hear they got new furniture. Do you think they'll put the school up for sale? Mm, there's some talk that they will. Now, do you think I should leave the desks as they are or stack them in the corner? Oh, I should leave them as they are. Mm, perhaps that would be better. Molly? Yes? Can you remember Howard Cross? Or was he before your time? Well, he died when I was about nine. I saw him once or twice. What was he like? I can't remember much, except that he was big and stocky built. He was an old man when I saw him. Didn't your father work at the hall? Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll just... Molly. Get on with my... I know. I wasn't sure. You've heard the singing again. Yes. And I've seen something. The body of a woman hanging from that rafter. Only for a few seconds. But I saw it. That's what she did. Hung herself. Miss Bridges. Yes. You're the only one I know who's ever seen anything. Others has only heard the singing. The last was Mrs. Barley nearly ten years ago. And you? Oh, I hear it all the time. I always have. Right from being a child. But I never seen anything. But you knew Miss Bridges killed herself? Yes. But why did she do it? Well, she was seeing Howard Cross from the hall. He used to come here at night and went on all the time she were here. Something went wrong, I don't know what. Mr. Cross come up to see her and found her up there. How do you know that? My father was working at the hall then. And the night Miss Bridges died, Mr. Cross fetched him out. To help with the body? Well, it was a school holiday. Potato picking week. She did it on the Tuesday. They took her down, put her body in the house, and then took her down to the railway line the next night. To make it look like an accident? No, oh, they couldn't let her be found in school like that. Your father told you this? No. No, my mother told me. Father only told her just before he died. It troubled him having to help like that. Did he stay at the hall? He became head groom. And he was left money when Mr. Cross died. When was that? Um, 1931. There was no one to take over the hall. It went to a cousin in Australia. Now, he sold it. Mm. Does Bob know about Miss Bridges? Oh, yes. He never said anything to us. Oh, we, we didn't know what to do. We weren't sure you'd ever hear anything. Not everybody does. What about when somebody buys the school, will you tell them? I don't know. I've not heard anything since. Perhaps she's at rest? Yes. It was never anything bad. It was never meant to harm. Yes, I realize that. He was a good man to the village. They'd have made a good couple. His wife was never here. Always in London, my mother said. Hardly came back at all after their two sons was killed on the Somme. Do you think anybody knew that Howard Cross came to the school? Mm, a good many, according to my father. But they knew better than to say anything. Even after the accident? Especially then. They kept things to their selves in those days. Well, I shan't say anything, Molly, except to Jill. She knows most of it anyway. I think it's best to say nothing. Ancient history now. 
Yes. I suppose it is. Very nice. Where did you get the flowers? Sally Roberts brought them this morning. Uh, a leaving present. I don't think she'd mind Miss Bridges having them. They'd only wilt before we got them to Granford. Mm, yes. I wish I'd bought a trowel. The weeds have started growing already. Well, the Watsons will be coming up next week to tidy things up. We'll come here again, won't we? Yes. We'll drive over occasionally. I'm sure Bob's expecting to see us every weekend. It was a grisly thing to do. Hmm? Taking her body down to the railway line like that. I suppose he was desperate. Must have been a, a real so-and-so. According to Molly, he wasn't. He can't have been the hard-drinking, lecherous squire type. Miss Bridges would never have fallen for that. No. No, I don't think she would. I shall always think of her sitting alone, waiting for him. Well, we'd better get back to the house. The removal van will be here at two. Living in a town again is going to seem odd. <laughs> no strange noises in the night on Cherry Hall Drive. No strange anything. Predictable security with all mod cons. <laughs> Isn't that what you want? <laughs> yes. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> it didn't take long. At this rate, we'll be installed in Cherry Hall Drive by tea time. Did you give them a tip? I'll give them something when they've unloaded. Well, we'd better get after them. Oh, plenty of time. We'll catch them up before they reach Granford. Oh, have you got the school keys? Yes, yes. I'll drop them off at Bob's before we go. Well, we'd better set off then. I'll just have a look at the schoolroom before I lock it. Oh, we haven't left anything. I've checked. I just want to look. Oh, all right. never be closer to any children than we've been here. No. One day who'll buy it? Nobody local. Do you know what crossed my mind the other night? Putting in a bid for the school. <laughs> Two minds. <laughs> you weren't serious. Oh, just a passing thought. It wouldn't work. Because of Miss B? Partly. It was all right when we were teaching here. We belonged then. If we stayed, it wouldn't be the same. I sometimes feel that the past is stronger than the present in Oxby. I don't think I could live with that. Not all the time. Somebody will buy the school, tear it apart, and make it into a fancy weekend retreat. Good luck to them. They'll never know what we've been through so they can sleep in peace. You think she's gone, then? Yes. It's a pity we can't leave a plaque in memory of the ghost of Evelyn Bridges. Oh, poor Miss Bridges. Yes. Yeah. Poor Miss Bridges. Come on. Let's go. The Darkened Schoolroom was written for radio by T.D. Webster. Martin was played by John Pullen and Jill by Jane Wenham. Bob Kingsley was Gerard Green, Molly Kingsley, and Jameson. Andrew Smith, Michael Deacon, Mr. Green, Peter Woodthorpe, Mr. Watson, Michael Shannon, and Mrs. Watson, Maddie Head. The play was produced by Harry Catlin. <laughs>